Welcome back to the channel. In this one, we're going to have a look at installing Steam Fork on the Ambernick Win 600. So, you want to install this on your Win, Win 600? How do you go about that? Well, first things first, make sure you know how to rebuild your device so you've got a backup of your device before you start it, if you want to return to that. Because you're going to wipe everything. And it's quite an easy process. First thing you have to do is you have to, well, if you're not already put this on, turn it off. What you're going to need is a wireless keyboard, in my case one with a button missing. You're going to need a dock or a dongle of some sort so you can get, get a couple of extra ports because this only has two ports on it. You're going to need a pen drive, that's a 16 gig one but I think you'll get by with an 8 and obviously your, your USB unit for your um, keyboard. What you'll also need is a power source. Don't do this without it being plugged in because the last thing you want to do is crash it while it's, while it's building. So, plug it into some power, we'll leave it in there plugged in for a minute. On the Steam Fork page there is a link near the bottom. With the download. Download the ISO and then burn that to your pen drive as you would any ISO. So use a tool like Rufus to burn that ISO file to your memory stick. Then what you want to do is plug in your keyboard adapter or just your keyboard if you're using a wired keyboard. Plug in your memory card that you're going to be using, your USB. Plug it into your machine and I'll just move this just now. And just to make things easy, I'm going to turn this because it comes out in portrait mode. And power on and be ready to press the delete button. So press the power button. Press the delete button. There you go. Now we're in the setup utility. From here, once you've got your stick in there, you need to go along to boot. And I see here it's defaulting to the the SSD that's built into it, the, the M2 uh, drive. The second boot option is the Corsair memory card. So you want to change that around. So you change that to there and press escape. Nope, no, you don't want to go save and exit. Save and exit and then let it restart. So right now I'm going to do what I would never recommend. I'm going to do this with no external power. I can't get the USB stick to work properly. So I've got it plugged into the USB C just now and I've got the keyboard plugged into the main USB. So Let's just see what happens. We'll power it on, be ready to press delete key. Okay, so we'll get into the um, BIOS setup. Hopefully, yep. Now, when I go across to boot, I should see two devices. I'm still only seeing one device. Why is that? You can actually use the, the keys here. But I'm not seeing what I expect to see. So what you would normally see is two boot devices here and you would tell it to boot from the memory stick and just go through the install process for installing SteamOS and it's, it's that simple. It's that simple. So if we um, restart it now, it may decide to boot up from that, that key, we're not sure. And it looks like it's just going to boot straight into Steam Fork OS. Which is a strange one. It's really not a difficult process normally. Maybe my um, memory stick has become corrupt. I set this up a couple of weeks ago. I just dug the card out again thinking I'll just go through the process again just for the purpose of the video. But it looks like it's just going to work. And that's not going to work, but this is going to work. So let's just cut to what we're here to watch. So unplug these, we'll move this out of the way. So here you have it, basically SteamOS, running on the Anbernic Win 600. Now that's not the first time this has been done. Hollow ISO was packaged up by Anbernic as a fully deployable ISO. But this is a little bit stronger, a little bit more powerful, a little bit more up to date than Hollow ISO for a start. It, it will update. Updates quite frequently, in fact, and sometimes breaks things, but 
you get frequent updates, you can go into the, the family beta, for example, for the game share in. One thing I have found is these buttons are a bit temperamental. Most of the face buttons work fine. Some buttons that don't work, the volume up and down rocker doesn't work. The, uh, the windows and the home button work, but not always as you expect. When you push the windows button, you should get the menu button on the left. When you push the home button, you should get the menu on the right. It's working just now, but it doesn't always work. Now, if I push up and down, you can see I'm going up to the menus. That's working just now. But sometimes, they'll just decide it wants to do volume and only volume. And pushing the left on the D-pad puts it into some sort of half brightness mode. Don't know why, but it does that. It's just one of the quirks. This isn't a, an, an a image that'll work on every single machine. It's not designed at all for the Win 600, but it works by and large. So the strongest feature of this Steam Fork is the fact that they've got Decky Loader and you can then go install simple Decky TDP, which you can get a link from on how to set that up in the um, Steam Fork GitHub. And from here, you can go into that, you can change your TDP settings. Now I've set mine to 18 watts. I found that to be quite the sweet spot. You will find games like Forza Horizon 4 will work, 30 FPS. The frame time graph's a little bit spiky, it's not great, but it runs about as well as it ran before in Windows, for example, on the, the Win 600. You can crank the power up a bit more, all the way up to 25 watts. I've set my max TDP. You can put it up as high as you like, to be honest. Uh, in fact, we'll go down there and we'll give it a tweak. You can uh, crank it all the way up to 40 watts. Uh, anything over 20, 22 really is just pointless, just generates heat. So I just keep it at 25, just as a, because it's a nice round number for me. Minimum I've set to eight because the, uh, the Athlon processor doesn't work great at really low TDPs. But for the games I've been playing, I've just left it set at 18 watts. I don't think it actually gets as high as 18 watts. I've been playing games like New Star GP, which is only about three or four gig in size. It's actually a really fun game. We'll just um, load this up just so you can see it running. And I mean, it loads up pretty well. In fact, it loads pretty quick. Now you do get some performance metrics up here. You obviously don't get utilization of the, uh, well you do get the utilization, sorry, but you don't get how many watts the CPU side and the GPU side are taken. But you do get, turn that volume down. And if we want the volume, where is that setting, sorry. Okay. So that's, that's one thing that's annoying. You can't quickly do your volume controls on the side. But it does give you some good information here. You can see, you know, how much RAM you're using for the game, how much VRAM's been used, the average watts, and, and how long your battery life's expected to be. Now, the Anbernic Win 600 didn't have a great battery life anyway. You're looking at about an hour. If you could pick one of these up cheap enough, I mean, you could have a bit of fun with this. What I like, particularly about Steam Fork, is it gives you that nice console-style interface. You know, because the Anbernic itself is more console like it's more like a standard Anbernic, you know like their own custom os or linux based systems and as you can see mine's getting a little bit scratched up here but it runs really well on this so well um i'll just go through a little race so you can see what it's like now what i like about this is uh it's an arcade style game throttle on and throttle off you don't have to be too oh my throttle doesn't seem to be working now why is that ha ah, I've got the slider set to mouse mode so if I put it to game controller mode now it's working there we go I think what we'll do is we'll just uh, restart this. They're not analog triggers on the Amber Neck, they're just switches, so it kind of suits this game, to be honest, because you are pretty much just on, on the throttle or on the brakes or rolling through corners. And what I like most is the fact you can use the D pad in this game. And uh, while the Amber Neck got a lot of sl uh, slating for uh, not being ergonomic, it's actually pretty good when you're using it as a D-pan machine, and these 
arcade style games are just perfect for it. And as you can see, hopefully you can see, I can't see because I'm too busy concentrating and doing a bad job, that the FPS counter is um, pretty much stuck at 60. You see that on the top there? This game's hard, I'm in the 2000s now, the 2000 era cars, and um, if you get a corner right, it goes very well, and if you get a corner wrong, you're just right off the track. That wasn't a very good effort, but as you can see, it runs pretty well, even if my driving skills are not up to much. So should you try installing Steam Fork on your Win 600? I don't see why not. It runs pretty well. Maybe it doesn't have quite the feature set of just running on Windows where you know all your buttons will work and some of your buttons go a little bit strange at times on this. Um, what I haven't shown in the video so far is if you have any problems with a game not wanting to work, that's the wrong thing I want to do. I want to go back in mouse mode because this seems to work most reliably. So sometimes the buttons don't want really to do anything. And then they'll just come to life. Okay. So like I say, sometimes the controls, these buttons here go a bit screwy and don't want to work. And if you see things like it's not going to do it for me just now, but if the uh, the screen goes really dim, the easiest way to fix that, in fact, I can probably force this. If I put it in controller mode now, this will probably when it starts going a bit wonky. So, the controls are actually working just now, but if I push left on the D-pad, oh, it's actually going to work. And that's one of the little peculiarities of this. Sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. So when you're in here, if you go down to settings, down to controller, and begin the test. What I'll often find is all the controls seem to work okay. But if you push, say, the Windows button, it, it's loading up the Microsoft button, the Xbox button there. If I push the Home button, it does the A and the Xbox button together. And it seems to be stuck on. So when I push a different button, it cancels it. So it's, that's where I think some of the issues come from. The, the button mapping appears to be a little bit wonky and then if it goes wrong where it's just you know the up and down or only doing volume which does happen the solution i found is to go back in that setting and um, just test it and all the controls will work fine I and mean, when you press the long press the b button to come out it just starts working again and if that still doesn't work just put it in mouse mode and you're fine when you're in the interface okay it's like i say it's a little bit of a workaround but these games that I've played so far are running really well. And there we have it. We've just installed Steam Fork on the Arbonic Win 600. Why not try it yourself? Let me know how you got in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.